I came across an interesting item of malware this week, and I thought I would share it with you guys. A malicious SVG file, or Scaled Vector Graphics Image File. And this is it right here. So I've opened it up in CAT here because I don't want it to execute as an image, or be opened as an image file. Although it shouldn't have an effect on Linux, because as you'll notice here, ActiveX object, WScript shell, and running in PowerShell. That would not do anything on my system, since I don't have Wine on here. And don't have PowerShell either, <laughs> so yeah, that's going to do nothing much at all. So execution policy bypass, and run an encoded command. So let's talk a little bit about SVG files first. So here is an example of one. And to show it is an image, here is it in Inkscape. I find them quite an interesting image type, because you have items drawn as points on a reference, and you can actually zoom in and like keep zooming, and it will remain smooth. Although that's quite a bad example, because there's a blur effect on here. So yeah. Anyway, I've zoomed right into 3000%, and that is still a smooth curve. Because the image is requested as draw a curve, it will draw a curve no matter what the percent level on the zoom. Anyway, as you can see from a scaled vector graphics image file, it is legible. You can view and even edit these inside a text editor. And they can be used in browsers and even take on effects from the CSS file or cascade style sheet file. But apparently one other ability they have is to carry a JavaScript payload. And that's exactly what is in use on this item of malware. So malicious image files are nothing new really. Malware has been inside PNG files and JPEG files for years. I remember one of the vulnerabilities in Windows dating back to the early 2000s. So Here is the analysis of this SVG file I showed you at the beginning of the video. And this has been run in a malware detonation program and the results interpreted and displayed nicely in English here. So it kind of makes my job a bit easier. And I also get an analysis video, but in this instance, it doesn't actually display an image, which is rather disappointing. So it's opened it up in Internet Explorer and you know, just got a blank screen. That's hardly surprising, I suppose. <laughs> there is actually no representation of an image there in that file. So yeah, pretty poor effort. I suppose they could have done an image and malware at the same time. Anyway, behavioral indicators. And we have them listed here as severity a percentage and confidence percentage. So process hollowing detected, 100% malicious, 95% uh, confidence. Not really too much of an interesting one to read about, so let's carry on. PowerShell with encoded commands downloads data. And it's interpreted where the download would come from, because it's uh, this is only the first stage of the malware. The second stage would be downloading the executable and making it persistent. So yeah, disregard those. Registry persistence mechanisms refers to an executable in a user directory. So this is the malware making the executable persistent. I know my channel is more about Linux, but this item of malware is specific to Windows, but yeah, it's still a threat that is attacking the world, so it's still worth talking about, I think. Anyway, so in the registry, that bizarre concept I don't really know about. <laughs> so users, uh, software, Microsoft, Windows, current version, run. Persistence. Downloaded file executed. I know it's a bit out of order because we will find the download in a moment. Oh, it changes the file name, yeah, from repende to nonsense. Artifact with virtual enumeration detected. Malware will often attempt to identify that it is running with a virtual environment in order to inhibit analysis attempts from researchers to avoid sandboxing techniques. <laughs> Good effort, and a fail, because it was analysed in a virtual environment. Anyway, let's, uh, let's look at this outbound HTTP request. So we got a download from uh, that .com.tr website. And the executable is called my1.exe. And everything else here is kind of a lower severity, still fairly high on the confidence. And lastly, we come to registry activity. Some of these items can be created and modified by standard Windows behavior. So I do have to kind of skip over some of those. Yeah, because it looks like quite a lot here, but that's just uh, standard behavior. Actually, the item I was after was a modified key entry. So internet connections, so internet explorer behavior. Here we are, proxy bypass. So it modifies the proxy 
settings on Internet Explorer. So interesting, from opening a scaled vector graphics image file, we now have our proxy settings changed on Internet Explorer. Quite what it does beyond this, I'm not entirely sure. So it modified the behavior of the internet and potentially allow an attacker to see inside encrypted traffic. They could probably quite easily see internet passwords and access online banking. What is my advice really? Well, I suppose on Linux we don't really have much to worry about, but that's because there's no Linux versions that I've seen. Perhaps there are, who knows. But just kind of be careful where you're downloading scaled vector graphics images from. If someone hands you this in an email, which was where this one came from, and you weren't expecting an email, I would just delete it. Don't be curious. Curiosity killed the cat. That's one saying that we have. Or if someone handed you this file in a Facebook chat or in a kind of chat room or something, yeah, I would kind of be wary of those. But if you're on an image hosting website or like something like Open Clip Art, then yeah, don't worry about those, they're going to be legitimate image files. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.